This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for November 19, 2022. Thank you so much for tuning in and for supporting the channel. It's an absolute pleasure to see you here this morning. I wish for all of you a fantastic and a safe day. Now today, family, we begin with a story out of the parish of St. Anne, where a man is being sought by the police for chopping to death another man. So, guys, the mayhem continues. And, you know, every day we wake up, we are, you know, just praying and hoping that somehow all of us as Jamaicans will find a way to resolve our issues without resorting to violence, you know? This place would be a lovely place, you know? So, family, let me know what you think about this because sometimes it has to, it, it, it's gun-related where, you know, it's the criminals. But then again, there's another side to the, the crime and violence where us as families, friends, you know, acquaintances, sometimes we hurt each other. When did we get to this point? Because I remember there was a time when, um, you know, and the older folks will tell you, you could walk free, walk free on our streets and everybody, you know, was like family. But these days you have to be ever so careful. You have to be looking over your shoulders. Every time you go into a business place, you have to be looking, you know, like yesterday, I was in a business place, you know, just to share. And <laughs> I, for some reason, I was just, you know, it came to my mind that, oh my God, I need to be on the alert. Because, I mean, you don't know what will happen. Isn't it unfortunate? What do you think? Let me know. Um, share your thoughts in the comment section. I'm always happy to hear from you. And guys, thank you so much for the support because I see more of you commenting and I love that. All right, so let us share, let us have a talk about that. All right, so let's get into the story. A St. Anne man is now being sought by the police, accused of chopping to death the partner of his ex-spouse after an altercation in Discovery Bay, St. Anne, on Friday evening. Police report that around 6 p.m., the accused visited the house of the woman, who is also the mother of his child. According to the news sources, the man was there to visit the child. Reports are that while he was at the location, the partner of his child's mother arrived. Police say that while they were at the location, an argument developed. It is reported that the accused chopped his ex-spouse's partner multiple times. Police were called to the scene where the wounded man was taken to the hospital and later pronounced dead. The accused man has since been on the run. So guys, like I said, let me know what you think about this one in the comment section. How are we going to solve these issues? Why are we, you know, sometimes we're so angry and we hurt one another? Like I said, drop it in the comment section. Let us talk about this one, all right? So guys, moving into our next story, which is still in the parish of St. Anne, where yesterday there was a fatal accident where, you know, a man would have lost his life and later on another man would have succumbed to his injuries and a number of persons were injured. You know, my heart goes out condolences to the family of the persons who would have lost their loved ones and i hope that everybody who is injured you know will recover soon and will be up and running so the story says operations officer at the guardsman group of companies rudolph green is convinced that friday's horrific crash could have been worse if it wasn't for the actions of the company's driver police say the two vehicle collision involving the guardsman bus and the toyota wish motor car happened some time after 8 a.m. on the Laughland Main Road. Alwyn Smith from Steertown in St. Anne died from the crash. He was driving the motor car. He was pronounced dead at hospital. And like I said, family, um, you know, another person would have succumbed to their injuries after that. So thus far, we would have had two fatalities resulting from that crash. All right, so continuing the story. Green, who expressed a condolence to Smith's family and the friends, said he visited the scene of the crash and left with the impression that his colleague had tried his best to avoid the collision. If I am speaking from a guardsman perspective and I look at what happened this morning, it has nothing to do with the driver of our staff. As a matter of fact, he is our hero this morning because he saw what was coming. He did all that he could. 
He actually went over the softer shoulder. The only thing left for him to do was to actually drive into the ditch, which he didn't do because perhaps it would have been worse. So he really did all that he could have done at the moment to avoid anything else serious, he said. He insisted that guardsman drivers are adequately trained. The continuous appeal on our part is for our drivers to use the road in a responsible way. We have various training courses. Before a driver hits the road, they go through training. I know it's easy to brand people. You see one car and you say, all security companies gonna have accidents, but we don't put a driver behind a steering wheel without first training them, Green told the news. He stressed, however, that he had no information on the cause of the crash. So family, you know, in presenting this story to you, I would have given this a bit of thought before, you know, the fact that he mentioned that, you know, their drivers are trained. Um, do we train our drivers in Jamaica? Do, because, you know, I don't know, tell us what it's like in other countries, like in England and America, if you're there and you're listening from there, how, how are persons trained to drive? You know, is it a case where your uncle and auntie can drive? And then, you know, the teacher to drive? Or is it that you have to go through a formal system of schooling where you learn to drive and then only when you would have, you know, passed all of those tests or met those criteria that you are given a driver's license? Tell us what it is like and maybe, you know, through your suggestion, maybe that's just one of the ways that we will have to move forward in our country, you know, because a lot of us sometimes how we learn to drive is somebody teach us to drive, you know. So a lot of us... um. In Jamaica learning to drive we may not go through a formal schooling system let me know your thoughts or some people will tell you too oh well you know um, it doesn't matter as long as you're able to somebody can teach you anybody then you can go on our roads but based on what we are seeing you know the number of fatal accidents and so on it begs for the question as to whether we should have a formal training system for our drivers where everybody is aware of you know the do's and the don'ts and and so on so let us know what you're thinking. Drop it in the comments section. So the story continues where Mr. Green said that I'm certain that the authorities will investigate the matter. We can't speak from a doctor's perspective, but we're gauging from what they're telling us that we're hoping that by the end of the day, some people may be discharged from the hospital, he added on Friday. Smith is the third person to perish on the parish's roads in less than a week. On Saturday, hotel workers Mikhail Thompson and Reese Thomas died in a two-vehicle collision. So family, in our next story, the Prime Minister says to turn in your guns as there will be no extension to the firearm amnesty. So tell me what you think about this one. Um, do you think there should be an extension to give those persons an opportunity to bring in the guns or that should be it and from now on you know the consequences if it is that you would not have brought in your illegal weapon. Talk to me. Tell me what you think about this one. All right. Would love to hear from you. All right. So with just a few hours until the gun amnesty expires, Prime Minister Andrew Holness is appealing to anyone in possession of an illegal or unregistered firearm to turn them into the authorities. In a statement yesterday, Holness indicated that the government will not extend the amnesty. He disclosed that, that over 70 weapons have been handed over so far. Noting that some persons may be fearful or uncertain about surrendering illegal guns, Holness charged that the security forces and the firearm authority have conducted the amnesty in an exemplary manner. According to him, there have been no breaches of the guarantees of confidentiality and no prosecution under the amnesty. So guys, the Prime Minister say you can trust the process, so you can turn in the guns because they have been dealing with the matter in a professional way, so have no fear. So the story continues. He warned that the security forces will now intensify search operations for guns and gunmen. While it is good to take illegal guns off the street, the impact on the homicide rate is greater if the shooters are also caught and arrested. Already, there have been several persons arrested for illegal possession of firearms, including a teenager. They will face a minimum of 15 years behind the bars and possibly life in prison. I am making a solemn and urgent appeal to our young men particularly. Please, I implore you, even at this late stage, turn in the guns said wholeness. He said the security forces will be focusing on intensive searches, snap rates and targeted operations, 
to get the gunmen with their guns. Again, I urge anyone with an illegal firearm to turn it in. You have been warned. So there you have it, guys. You have heard it from the Prime Minister. So family, we have come to the end of our newscast for this morning. Thanks for being here with us. And do remember to join us later today for additional news updates, alright? So do have a productive and safe day. Walk good. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.